just a couple of resources. I may have sent these over to you before, but Smartsheet has a functions list, which is cool. It's just like all a list of all of the formula functions that they have. And they also list whether it's advanced or um, I'm trying to see if there's any that even say basic or logic or date only. And it just kind of has some details about them and, and links to learn more because um, you can click on them and you can um, you can go to the actual page that then talks about what the function is and then it gives you examples which is really helpful when you're starting out to understand formulas i'm sure you guys have seen these before um but those are really helpful as well and then i also have a bookmark for formula error messages um because i get these a lot as i'm doing formulas and i even though i do them all the time i still often just forget what each of them mean um and sometimes even the um description doesn't 100 percent get me there but it just gets me to either sometimes i just have to start rewriting it i never figure out what i did wrong to <laughs> start over and then i get there because it could have been like a comma or a parenthesis somewhere that i missed that i just like couldn't see from looking at it for some reason but um nonetheless this is still helpful because some of them i mean they all have information you can kind of get an idea of what's going on there so I took this just <laughs> random. Oh, I just got feedback all of a sudden. Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's gone. I all of a sudden was like hearing myself really loud. Um, I just used this like basic sheet from my smart sheet certification exam just to have data to pull from. I'm gonna add one more so I can do a sum if too. So I'm gonna do like revenue do dollars and then do just start type. Just. Okay, so um, you can now build graphs through reports with Smartsheet, which is great, but there are still instances where you're going to need um, where you're going to want a metrics sheet. So I'm going to walk through that. So I'm going to create a sheet, call it metrics sheet, example. And open that up. So in Typically, when I'm building metrics sheets, um, I don't often need to change the column names. If you're, you know, building a report or something, then it's important for the column names to be updated. But if you're just using this for metrics, um, like metrics widgets on a dashboard or a chart, which I could show you how those translate to, you don't really need to change the column names. So oftentimes I don't. Um, these are all just text number formulas, which is or text number. Um, column types, which is what you need mostly for uh, metrics sheets. But um, in this example, I'm also going to use a contact. I'm going to change one of these columns to be a contact row or contact column so that I can match to that. So for example, in this, this is a marketing request tracker. So I added um, assigned to status and a few other specific data points. So there's three statuses requested in progress and closed. So let's say I want to look at how many each person has in each of these statuses. I'm going to use this contact column to type in our names. So I used myself, Lisa, Melissa. Did I even use Melissa? Nope, just Molly. I used Molly um, as examples of folks that it's assigned to. And then I'm just going to put what the statuses are up here. So there's requested, in progress, and closed. And that will become clear in a minute for why I do that. Just like to formatting is not necessary. I just like to do it um, to have it stand out. So for this, I'm going to use a count ifs formula. So there's count if singular and count ifs. Most often you're going to need plural, but um, I have two criteria, right? So I need to pull in if it is assigned to me and if it is requested. So count ifs, parentheses, and then it always comes up with a little helper of where each thing needs to go. So the first thing I need to look for is 
what is the range that I'm looking at for criteria? So the range that I'm looking at is the assigned to row. So I need to wait for my sheet to come up. And I think I have it in this basic activity. Okay. So the first criteria I'm looking at is who is it assigned to? So I need to search this range for who it's assigned to. I'm gonna update my sheet reference name so when I come back to it, I remember what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at the assigned to uh, column in the marketing request tracker. So then the next criteria, and sometimes it will drop you, it will drop the um, little, cursor before the bracket, you always need to put the comma after the bracket. So a reference is always gonna be bracket and then your reference name. And so the criteria is in that range, I'm looking for items that are assigned to me. So by having myself in this sheet, that helps me to be able to um, use this formula and drag and drop it down. And I'll show you how I do that in just a second. Um, versus in account ifs formula, you can also, do like parent um you can do quotations mm -hmm. for like what it's supposed to say to match that that can also be your criteria but it's not as resilient long term in case it in case your name changes or something along those lines so i'm just going to look up to that contact row and then my second range is going to be the status so it's going to bring me right back to that sheet i'm going to do the status i'm going to update the reference name to be status so i know again and then I'm going to do a comma. See how it dropped me in the middle of it? I got to move to the end, do comma, and then do requested. And then hit enter. So now you can see that there are four items that are assigned to me in the requested status. Now, if I want to drag and drop these formulas similar to how you do in Excel, there's one additional thing I need to do. So you need to use, and this is actually typical for Excel too, um, you need to use. Um, dollar signs ahead of the column name or the row depending on what you're looking for so for this one i want it to stay in the same column so i'm going to put a dollar sign ahead of the column and for this one i want it to move over columns as i drag it but i want it to stay in row two so i'm going to put the dollar sign ahead of the two sometimes i will look up to a specific cell that never moves and in that instance, you need to put the dollar sign before the column and before the row. So it's absolute, it's always looking to that cell. So that's not gonna change my calculation, but it's gonna allow me to drag over and drag down. And then I can make sure that it's looking up correctly by just double clicking and seeing that it's referencing the right things in each formula. And then typically, if you wanted to like sum these up, so I could do a sum, like if I just wanted to also know how many are total requested, and I can drag that across too to see.